Hello again, it's Cliff here from Down Under. How are you doing? Um, I thought I'd do a little bit of a video on enclosure designs. And because um, I'm about to tear one down and then it'll be gone. So now's a good time to do a bit of a video on it. So about three years ago, I built this. Three or four, I don't know. A few years ago, I built this in first enclosure, which is uh, got really good access. And it's, I think I call it a lift enclosure. And the whole front comes up, and you've got really good access here, plenty of room. And um, it was a sort of a radical rethink of the idea of enclosures, because normally they had sliding doors, of course. And, and why I did this was because I wanted really good access, so I could get in here and just freely have it like a non-enclosure CNC, but when I was doing a coolant intensive job, I could um, drop the front down. And then I modified it and put a sliding front in it, slowly evolving back towards a sliding door CNC so that I could get in and adjust the coolant and even do a tool change like that. But there's a couple of failings or weaknesses with this design which I'll go into in a minute but what I'm going to do now to start with is tear down the monitor stand. One thing that I think is really important for a hobbyist or a small business is to have your machines that are really um, have a small footprint to have compact machines um, and that way you can move them around you can fit in as many machines as possible. You can maximize the use of your workshop space. And so the same thing applies to enclosures. You really want your enclosure to be as compact as possible. Um, one of the failings with this lift enclosure design is that the monitor can't be here. I mean, ideally you want the monitor stand and the keyboard and so on to be within the footprint, within the package size of the machine. You know, you really want, I was able to make it rotate like this, but I had to have it clear of the lift enclosure. And um, it's not ideal because it's outside the boundaries of the machine and it, and it limits your space utilization. You know, and this is key for a lot of workshops. Um, so I'm going to rip this off now and, uh, and uh, construct a different design monitor stand. Okay, so I began to see the limitations of that lift type door. Um, I'll try and keep this as summary as concise as possible. So then about two years ago, was it 18 months ago, I built this... Um, smaller uh, in design enclosure. This is a really compact enclosure. It's 55 inches wide. It's really compact. And I built it in a relatively conventional way with sliding doors because I could see a couple of ways around. The normal limiting factor is there's a rail here that the doors slide on. And when there's a rail there, it makes it really awkward getting, getting at the machine to do tool changes, you know, to reach the control panel and so on. But I thought, well, I could have uh, sliding doors without a rail. And I've got, I've got other videos. Um, if you look at the, my playlists, there's a series of videos on enclosures. And I go into this in more detail there. This is just a summary as to why why I'm changing my designs. And I thought, okay, I can, I can have it without the rail and I can have the doors swinging to get really good access. And then I came up with this idea of the monitor. Well, actually a friend of mine suggested it to me that um, you could have the monitor pivoting right out the way and you've still got full access as per the lift enclosure, but it's got a lot more versatility. I can have it like this, 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 
however I want to have it. It's completely versatile. And so really, with the benefit of hindsight, I can see this is a better design. Overall, this is a better design than my tilting lift enclosure. And so what I'm doing now is slowly changing the tilting lift enclosure with its monitor stand towards this design. I don't want to do it in one big hit because it would take me a couple of weeks and um, I'm just doing it you know, a day here and a day there as I get a chance. So the first stage is to change the monitor stand's uh, articulated mount to something like this. This is highly versatile and allows you to put the monitor stand wherever you want. Whereas where I've got it now, all I can do is pivot it around. And the biggest problem is it sticks outside the envelope of the, of the machine. It increases the footprint of the machine. And I'm probably going to buy another machine tool sooner or later. And I just need all the space I can get. So I've been building up uh, the components for this articulated monitor mounting system. And um, I'm about to tear this system down. And you're probably thinking, what? You spent all that time building that stand and monitor mount, now you're going to rip it all down. And that's one of the problems of being, um, you know, really design focused is that I'm really not happy with a design that's less than optimal. I mean, this, this design of this little enclosure is 55 inches wide. I mean, it, it's an 1100 in a footprint of a machine, not much bigger than a 440. And yet it's really versatile and compact and it's got good access. And I get a real buzz out of that. I mean, it's really satisfying to optimize the design. Um, design is a, is a fascinating process. What you're doing when you're designing something is you're gazing into the future. It's, uh, and the future is unknown. Um, you're trying to think ahead as to what it would be like, to anticipate what it would be like. Uh, and then you design it, and then you build it, and then you try it, and then you find out whether or not your predictions were correct. And very often they're not. And then the hard decision is, what do you do? Do you live with this less than ideal design? Or do you tear it down and uh, rebuild it? And if I can possibly find the time and the energy to do that, that's my preferred approach. Because, because I just like optimizing things and I, and I just really enjoy it when they are. So that's it all bolted up. Pretty much the same design as my original one. I stiffened up some of the sections a little bit because um, it's nice to have it really solid and, and not flopping around when you're operating it. So it's an articulated arm with three pivots, one, two, and three. And I'll just show it in operation in, in a second. Okay, so its main position of use will be when I have this, eventually have the sliding enclosure doors in place, its main position will be here or here um, as per the other uh, compact enclosure um, but it's also got the ability to be put there or there or it can come towards the front and I can still use my tilting lift door if I want to. So it's kind of a, a sensible intermediate step as I gradually re revert to the design of the sliding door type enclosure. Now I don't know whether I'm going to be doing that this year or next year but it's a kind of a direction I'm heading in towards optimizing the design. So this gives me a lot of versatility. One day I'll be saying goodbye to that lift enclosure as well, I presume. Well, as mentioned earlier, if there's something here I've touched on that you're interested in, 
have a look at my other videos on enclosures. I think I've got a playlist of uh, several where I go into the designs in more detail. But this is all going towards making more workshop space. I've got a more compact footprint for the machine. Uh, that means I can stack them more closely together, move everything along a little bit, and clear this corner out where I can fit another machine tool. You've got to keep growing. If you're not growing, you're shrinking. And if you're shrinking, especially when you're getting old, things start going downhill really fast. So I'm going to keep growing for a few more years yet. Thanks for watching, guys. Cheers.